Very good. Okay. Okay. So welcome to the phenomenology session of the FCC workshop. The first speaker is uh, Sven. Uh, first speaker of the first session. The first one is more on precision physics, and the second one will be more on uh, phenomenological opportunities. So I think you have your microphone here. Okay. Is this supposed to work? This is supposed to work? I think work usually works, but uh, not for the uh, to pointing because the screen uh, rejects the light. We have you can use the stick. I get my own pointer. <laughs> no? Because the screen is a is a okay, okay. To, to not. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Good. Good afternoon, everybody. This is, as Andrea said, the uh, Fino session. And then the title that was given to me was Phenomenology, Introduction, and News. However, if you look at the uh, various Fino groups, well, I don't know whether anybody can read it except the first row. There are five groups. And, well, QCD and uh, Gamma Gamma, Precision Electroweak, Flavor Physics, Model Building and New Physics, and Global Analysis Combination, etc. And I'm actually assigned to one of them, working group two, precision electric calculations, and this is what I will focus on. And I think the first part before the coffee break actually focuses more on that group, whereas the second part is then more uh, BSM and new models. First, <clears throat> I would like to stress again why the Fino session is important and why theorists uh, should be an integral part of the whole operation here. We know or we estimate that we will get very high accuracy data from current and future experiments, and this, of course, includes particularly the FCCE. But uh, the uh, measured observables have to be compared with the theoretical predictions in the various models. And I mentioned here two explicitly. I will have some more later on, the standard model and the minimal supersymmetric standard model. But it applies, of course, to any model that you are interested in. And the measured data is only really meaningful if it is matched with theoretical calculations, masses, couplings, etc., at the same level of accuracy. Yeah, only then you can really make full use of all the data that you get. And therefore, I, as a theorist, I like to stress that theoretical calculations should indeed be viewed as an essential and integral part of all current and future high energy physics programs. <coughs> The general idea with the precision observables that we will be looking at, we measure something very precisely. I listed a couple of quantities here, and then we compare with theory. And meaning comparing with theory, meaning comparing with the calculation at the quantum level, and here via this type of uh, quantum corrections, all the model enters into the prediction, not only the external particles, but all the model can enter and can modify the prediction. And since different models have different particles and different couplings, different models give you different predictions. For example, in the standard model, it was possible to set limits on the Higgs boson mass, and in BSM models, like uh, what uh, I think John was presenting yesterday partially, you can get limits on the unknown particles that are floating around here. Of course, you need very high accuracy of the measurement and of the theoretical predictions, and the models that are most ready so far to make really meaningful comparison are indeed the standard model and the MSSM. <coughs> now, coming to the working group two, precision electric weak calculations. Theory predictions, what we want to do is an assessment of the uncertainties and how to improve on one part are the electroweak precision observables, like the W boson mass, like the effective weak mixing angle, like partial and total the Z boson width. And uh, this is, well, I th yes, no, sorry, I will come back to this later. This will be a subject also of the next talk. And uh, the other part likely will concern Higgs observables, where one very prominent example is the Higgs boson mass itself, because in most BSM models, it is not a free parameter, but can be calculated in this way, is a precision observable on its own. Of course, we also have to take care of the, or one, somebody has to take care of the Higgs production cross-sections and the branching ratios. I put here a couple of question marks because it's still not fully clear to me who will take care of uh, this kind of calculations. 
as I said, we will look at tier predictions and do this assessment of uncertainties, but in which model? Of course, in the standard model, this is a no-brainer, but uh, here I'm very happy that uh, Iris Freitas, who will give the next talk, uh, will uh, help here, and uh, I try to get him on board as a co-convener because he is really working on the stuff these days, and it's very good to have him there, and I'm very happy that he will give the next presentation. I personally always like the MSSM, and if you listen to John's talk yesterday, I think there can't be any doubt that this is a very uh, thrilling model that uh, will soon be discovered at the LHC. <coughs> However, <coughs> even if you don't believe this, uh, it can still be taken as a showcase, and it also gives approximate uh, approximations for missing corrections in other ZUSI models, if it's not that one. Yeah? It tells you roughly what kind of structure maybe to expect and what size possible higher order corrections can have. So even if it's not this model, it can tell you something. Yeah? There are, of course, many other models to be kept in mind, like standard model plus a Higgs singlet, two x doublet models, or uh, other supersymmetric models. We should, of course, keep them in mind, but uh, after thinking a bit, I also discussed with Iris and with Christoph about it, it's certainly not feasible to look into all these models. If somebody wants to provide input, for example, we have in the second part of the afternoon, talks about composite Higgs models, so if somebody wants to provide input and tell us, look here, we get this precision, etc., etc., this is certainly interesting and we will take this into account, but, well, we will focus on this one and somehow on supersymmetry on the MSSM and then see what else uh, might come in, but uh, these uh, two ones are certainly the main focus. I wrote here that there should be a coordination, of course, with the other, with the model building and new physics group where Andreas is involved, and we will see what they want to look at and how this feeds in here. <clears throat> There's also, from the LHC Higgs cross-section working group, the uh, sub-working group three, which is concerned with the uh, new models, well, beyond the standard model, beyond the MSSM, and I think one should keep a relation, a good a close relation with them, see what models they're interested in, in which models they do evaluations and take stuff over, because they will do it anyway. Another model that is supposed to be investigated, and also Iris will talk about this a bit, a standard model with some dimension six operators, which I always see as an extreme case because you have to make all the new physics scales heavy, and uh, his idea, or what he also proposed, and also other people proposed, to look at electric precision observables and look at the relevance of the dimension six operators here. But I said Iris will give some more details. The general idea to match the experimental uncertainties, we have to evaluate the intrinsic uncertainties. These are the ones from the missing higher order corrections, yeah, all the loops that we haven't calculated that. And we want to look at the parametric uncertainties. And then the question arises how these are added linearly or on quadrature. This as well. It's a, it's a difficult subject, let's say, and uh, I just mention it here. It will be discussed further. And uh, if you look at the... Um, <clears throat> these uh, intrinsic uncertainties, one has to analyze the various sources of missing higher order corrections, yeah? let's say order by order, and uh, they have to be analyzed also depending on where you are in the parameter space. It's clear that uh, extreme parts of parameter space can give you different answers there. So the uh, overall answer can't be a certain number, but it's normally parameter dependent. And then I wrote here that this should be based on an <laughs> rather than on theoretically available calculations. Iris and I discussed this a little bit, and it might be a bit harsh or a bit too restricted to phrase it like this. However, one should at least be aware, or one should take a look at the consistency of the various calculations. I know very good examples from my field, uh, Higgs physics in the MSSM, where nice calculations are available. You can't just add them up because they're incompatible. They have done, they've been done in different normalization schemes, and in order to match them, equally calc uh, complicated calculations still have to be done. So in principle, they are there, but it's just not possible to add them in a simple way. So one has to take this into account. And all these things have to be done observable by observable and then we can compare to the anticipated experimental accuracy and evaluate the physics gain. And then Allah always likes to look at the uh, zero uncertainty uh, limit to say this is the most uh, optimistic physics gain, and I always say it's a completely over-optimistic uh, 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 assessment here, but uh, we can certainly discuss this further. The electric precision observables will be discussed in much more detail in the, uh, further in the next talk by Iris. I say a few more words here on Higgs observables. 
I mentioned that the Higgs boson mass in the BSM models itself is a very interesting and very important um, observable in the fits that John presented yesterday. It also plays a crucial role to have a precise uh, input there. And if one looks at the MSSM or the NMSSM <coughs> as a showcase, still a lot of work has to be done and uh, a working, kind of working group has been uh, formed over the last year to try to look into this. And uh, no, I, I think I have a poster on this later on. But uh, so we, can, we should uh, look at what this working group will be doing because it's really a lot amount of, uh, large amount of work but uh, I hope that this group will take care of this and in the end gets us to a precision that is comparable, at least roughly comparable with the experimental accuracy. Uh, this is the name of this working group, or a kind of acronym for the working group. I, 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 come, I think I have a poster one or two slides later, then you will see. It's an abbreviation for catharsis of ultimate theory standards. The way to get to the ultimate theory standards, yeah, the, the way of cleaning and getting rid of the uncertainties. <laughs> As I said, there are the Higgs boson cross-sections <clears throat> which have to be evaluated uh, for, for any plus or minus machine with high precision. And here, of course, one can concentrate on the Higgs that we've uh, discovered, but we also hope that there will be more Higgs, so there might be even more work uh, around. There are the Higgs boson branching ratios, where one can also concentrate first on the discovered Higgs boson. And luckily here, one can really take over the results from the LHC Higgs cross-section working group. They have a subgroup responsible for branching ratios, and they will do anyway the job to look to improve on the precision, and uh, everything that has been done there can be taken over from this group. And uh, we have very good connections to the leaders of this group. And then, of course, there might be more observables, for example, for triple or quartic Higgs couplings, and it's not really uh, discussed or nobody really thought about what still has to be done here. Yes, uh, let me, because this is one of my uh, favorite topics, uh, I like to stress this again, this embarrassing situation concerning the Higgs boson mass. <clears throat> if one looks at the current experimental precision, the latest ATLAS and CMS values, the central values agree quite well, and then here we have uncertainties at the 200, 300 MeV level. If you combine it, you go down to a 250 MeV uncertainty, something like this. However, if you compare it in the best evaluated model, beyond the standard model, which is the MSSM, one is still at an uncertainty of roughly 3 GV, so one order of magnitude larger. And you, we will improve this further at the LHC, and then it will be improved at the plus and minus colliders, and we may go down to something like uh, 30 MeV or something like this, but if you are uh, even, uh, we can go down to very low numbers, but we, if we are stuck here with a theory uncertainty of 3 GV, it's completely relevant whether we measure it to 30 MeV or to 3 MeV. Yeah? It's, uh, uh, in the standard model, yes, but in BSM model, it's not. I said it's not irrelevant because it allows you to compute the branching fraction with a, a relevant precision. This is correct. The branching ratios to WW and ZZ depend strongly on the Higgs boson mass, and therefore, and for those, this uncertainty is not sufficient. Absolutely not, yeah? The uncertainties that we have here induce a 2 to 3 percent uncertainty in these branching ratios, correct? So we have to go down here, but once you've reached a level of, um, I don't know, 50 MeV, you are certainly very precise already. Okay, this interplay also has to be discussed. I, I agree. Still, if you want to make use in order to constrain the BSM models, then we have to improve on this number here. Yeah, this, there's... We will... What will be done to improve it? Well, we, uh, right now, we are looking at which higher order corrections are missing, which are the most relevant ones, and then we try to look which uh, methods can be used to evaluate them or to approximate them, and then somebody has to do the job. But there are groups working on this. Three, two loop, three loop, uh, resummation of uh, leading locks, yeah. I have a work done with Judith Czeslavich and Banyanski. Yes. I would claim that in my computation, the uncertainty is 1 GV. And I claim it's wrong. Even if my collaborators do not dare, 3 GV is in crazy corners of the parameter space. Normally, 
this no, I, I think this is a very detailed discussion. Now we can have it later. But I'm completely convinced that uh, there's no calculation variable whatsoever that goes uh, has a, such high precision. You're simply neglecting uncertainties when you say this. You don't look at all the not included corrections in your calculation. Um, but <laughs> microphone. Yeah, the chairman has to do some you, work. <laughs> you, here you, are, you have fixed uh, the, the, the various parameters, I suppose, right? And you talk of, uh, uh, once you have fixed the parameters... Of, of You're the talking of the BSM parameters. Yeah, I'm talking of the MSSM, right? Yeah, MSSM, yes, MSSM for example. So yes. you have fixed the parameters and you, you claim that uh, for, for after having fixed the parameters, you still have a 3 GV uncertainty. Yes. It's only the intrinsic uncertainty for missing higher order corrections. And yeah, this is what I just said. Uh, the theory prediction must be improved to match the experimental accuracy. And there we uh, formed this uh, working group. And just to make a little bit of advertisement, this is the poster that we put out. I don't know whether you can really read it. The next meeting will take place in mid-May in Paris. So theorists are not lazy. They really try to improve on this. Whoops. This appears returned, so you have to turn your head by 90 degrees. This is just uh, an example for the precisions anticipated for the various uh, coupling constants achievable at the LHC, at the ILC, and what is called here TLAB, and also some click numbers. Hmm? Okay, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, right, we are so lucky. <laughs> And yeah, one can see that one goes here to, well, this is not easily readable, but uh, this is 10%, 1, 1%, 1%, 1 per mil. So one goes really from the experimental side to the per mil level, and the question is, how can this be matched from the theoretical <coughs> side? Yeah? Can we get calculations that are equally precise to really make use of this kind of uh, high precision uh, measurements? And okay, there are many things that can be discussed uh, about the methods and so on. For the cross-section calculations, the standard model cross-section prediction is roughly at the 1% level. So if you want to go down to the 1 per mil level, you certainly have to do much more. Yeah? And we need certainly full two-loop calculations and certainly even beyond that improvements to get to the level that is needed in order to extract or to get a precision from the theoretical side that matches the experimental accuracy. For the branching ratios, we are current, the current accuracy at the few percent level depending on the channel, and also here, improvements are certainly necessary, and I said that this uh, branching ratio subgroup of the LHCX cross-section working group is trying to take care of this anyway, and we will, of course, try to use their results here as well. Yes, uh, microphone. <laughs> are you talking about branching ratios or partial ratios? Both. Um, it's indeed a very good question. We first evaluated the branching ratios, and then the experimenters came and said, look, if you give us the partial widths, then we can even get the correlations right yeah, between the various channels. And the group does both. I just write branching ratios here, but the group is doing both. Right, because something like Fact, the, the B partial width will always be affected by what is yes. the bloody B mass, yes. and it's going to affect everybody. In fact, it's, it's done the, the other way around. First, the uncertainties on the decay width, on the individual width, are calculated. From this, the overall uncertainty on the branching ratio can be obtained. So what you want is taken care of anyway. Some of the future plans for the uncertainty valuation, and also there will be more in IRIS talk. Uh, we have to set, evaluate the parametric uncertainties, and I just listed here some of the main parameters from the standard model here, like M top, maybe the bottom quark mass, and then the relevant coupling constants. And yeah, so then we can use this to assess the, to assess the future accuracy. Mm, for the intrinsic uncertainties, it's a bit more involved because, well, there are several methods that can be used and that have shown to be uh, sufficient, effective to get a rather a good estimate. I listed some of them. I will not go into details here. I think, well, these methods that I listed here have been used in the past. They have shown to give us results that after the calculation of a certain uh, previously missing higher order correction was always this gave us some conservative estimates. So I think these various method works. We just have to see which kind of method can be used for which part of the missing order corrections, and in this way get 
a reliable uh, estimate there. And uh, the final session here, this is the program of today. I just uh, copied this before because I think uh, the various talks that we have, they go in the right direction and several of the points that I uh, roughly discussed here will be discussed in more detail and also some interesting models will be looked at. So I think it's moving in the right direction. Thank you. Thank you, Sven. More questions? You already had a lot. Oh, we didn't hit one. We're talking of the branching, talking of the branching ratios or partial widths. Uh, I would like to make sure that you look at the E plus E minus. Yeah, but the branching ratios are collider independent. What? The branching ratios are collider independent. No, the decays. decays. Higgs coupling to the E plus E minus. Ah, okay. Because sorry, people sorry. Yes. Neglect that they say we never see. In fact, at TLEP with high luminosity, we are approaching the sensitivity. So I okay. want to make that's, sure that that's this, a very good point. That's that's because this is obviously sensitive to any loop and things like yes. that. Yes. So. Now, this is actually part of the um, working group that they are looking into this, which goes under the name Dalit's decays. I'm not an expert on this, but uh, we discussed it recently a little bit. And then the loop corrections, they're not suppressed with your cover coupling. Their contributions are not suppressed. And in this way, give you actually the leading contributions. And we are trying to um, get an estimate. There's um, the Spira, Michael Spira, who's the, one of the main authors of HDK. He's trying to implement this into HDK. And then we will also include this kind of decays into our predictions. <laughs> The production is another point, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yes. The production, once you have the width, it's the right Wigner. Once you have the width, you, you just calculate it. The coupling to initial state. Yeah, you know, the, the, there's a lot of discussion about this because the standard model partial width is such that we are maybe a factor of five too low in production to be able to observe the S channel production. But if this is, if the Dallas uh, decay or production dominates, then we have better chance. Yes, so, but this is then has to be taken in the production side, taken into account on the production side. See if it's sensitive yes. to new physics too. Yes, uh -huh. yeah. Well, there are many things that uh, can and have to be done, absolutely. I have a question concerning realistic observables. You mentioned basically, I guess, higher order need for the hard scattering process. Yeah? What is your opinion about QED corrections, maybe QCD corrections? Uh, do you think the available is sufficient? Or? I don't know in detail, I have to admit. Yeah? You are talking about the production, for example, of Higgs, or what do you have in mind? For these production cross sections, of course. Whatever these, you mentioned, yeah. Yeah, for all these uh, the, the uh, uh, corrections that you mentioned, radiation from the initial or from the final state, whatever, has all to be taken into account, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but is it uh, controlled, or do you expect I contributions? Don't think, I don't think that it's sufficiently controlled by now. I think what I said for the production cross section for the Higgs, the one percent level. This is the rough number that I have in mind. I think it includes what is available also from the radiation. You worked on this, probably you know better, but uh, <laughs> I don't think that we are below the uh, percent level there, but we have to go below the percent level. I just wanted to recall one thing, which I think was implicit in what you were saying, but the discussion is kind of focused on the Higgs properties. I mean, we also need much better calculations of Z properties, W top properties, this will be and, discussed and, in the and next also talk. top properties. Yes, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. The electroweak stuff, I didn't mention it here in more detail because Iris will talk about it. But also for the top, of course, you're right. And I had it in previous meetings. I also put a few more details on this, absolutely. Yes. We're talking about 10 to the 13 Zs. That might actually represent the strongest change. Yes, absolutely. But this will be discussed in the next talk.